Uh, well, good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome um, members and members of the public uh, to the fourth meeting of the Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee. Uh, members will know that Elaine Smith, MSP, has resigned from the committee and we wish her well. I would now like to welcome our new member, uh, Monica Lennon, to the committee. She attended last week as a substitute and has now been appointed to full member of the committee. So I welcome her to her first meeting in that capacity. Welcome, Monica. Going straight to the agenda, uh, agenda item one is the consolidation of instruments subject to affirmative procedure. The first three instruments we have before us today are part of a package of instruments on the first tier tribunal for Scotland. I wish to bring to the committee's attention that these draft regulations were initially laid on the 19th of August but were withdrawn and relayed on the 8th of September to address drafting errors identified by our legal advisers. The frequency with which instruments were withdrawn, particularly in the latter part of the last session, was of considerable concern to our predecessor committee. I hope that this situation is an isolated incident and it's not reflected reflective of a continuation of a trend from last session. It is simply not satisfactory for instruments laid before the Parliament to be in such a poor condition that they require to be withdrawn. There are now no points to raise on these instruments, which are the draft first tier tribunal for Scotland transfer of functions of the Homeowner Housing Panel Regulations 2016, the draft first tier tribunal for Scotland transfer of functions of the private rented housing panel regulations 2016, the draft first tier tribunal for Scotland transfer of functions of the private rented housing committees regulations 2016. Also, no points have been raised by our legal advisers on the remaining affirmative instruments relating to two tribunals on our agenda. And these instruments are the draft first tier tribunal for Scotland housing and property chamber and upper tribunal for Scotland composition regulations 2016, the draft tribunal's offences in relation to proceedings regulations 2016, the draft first tier tribunal for Scotland chambers regulations 2016 and the draft first tier tribunal for Scotland transfer of functions of the Home Owner Housing Committee's regulations 2016. Furthermore, no points have been raised by our legal advisers on the following instruments. The draft prohibited procedures on protected animals exemptions Scotland amendment regulations 2016 the Draft Council Tax Substitution of Proportion Scotland Order 2016, the Draft Climate Change Annual Targets Scotland Order 2016, and the Draft Climate Change Limit on Use of Carbon Units Scotland Order 2016. Is the committee content with these instruments? Content. Thanks, many thanks. We now move to Agenda Item 2, which is consideration of instruments subject to negative procedure. The first instrument is the Scottish Tribunal's Time Limits Regulations 2016 SSI 2016-231. There is a discrepancy between the provision in Regulation 2.4 of the regulations and the provision in Rule 29.3 of the Upper Tribunal for Scotland Rules of Procedure as contained in the schedule to the Upper Tribunal Rules of Procedure Regulations 2016 SSI 2016-232. Rule 29.3 of the Upper Tribunal Rules applies where the Upper Tribunal gives its decision orally at a hearing and does not provide written reasons for its decision. The rule provides that a party seeking written reasons must request those reasons within 14 days of the oral decision. It does not require the request for written reasons to be in writing. Regulation 2.4 
of the regulations provides that where a decision of the upper tribunal is given orally at a hearing and a party requests written reasons in writing within 14 days, the relevant date from which the 30-day period for permission to appeal begins to run is the date on which written reasons were sent. Where written reasons are requested within 14 days but are not so requested in writing, the relevant date is the date of the oral hearing. The Scottish Government's response acknowledges that there is an anomaly between the two sets of provisions in that the upper tribunal rules do not require a request for reasons to be made in writing. The Scottish Government proposes to amend Rule 29.3 of the upper tribunal rules by amending regulations to come into force on the 1st of December 2016 to require requests for written reasons to be in writing. The committee notes the Scottish Government's intention to amend that rule and welcomes that. So does the committee wish to draw the instrument to the Parliament's attention under the general reporting ground? Agreed. Many thanks. Separately, the committee may wish to note that the interaction between provision in the regulations on the time limit for permission to appeal a first-tier tribunal decision and the period required for any review of that decision will not be clear until the Scottish Government brings forward rules of procedure for the first-tier tribunal. The committee does not draw that matter to the Parliament's attention in terms of its reporting grounds. However, does the committee wish to indicate to laying authorities that where two instruments cross-refer to one another or otherwise make provision which is dependent on provision to be made in another instrument, it would be extremely helpful to the committee if both instruments could be laid before Parliament at the same time or otherwise made available to the committee. Do we agree to that? Agreed. Thank you. The next instrument in our agenda is Council Tax Scotland Amendment No. 2, Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-253. Our legal advisers consider that the regulations raise a devolution issue as they may relate to matters which are reserved by Section F1 of Part 2 of Schedule 5 to the Scotland Act 1998. The regulations raise a devolution issue for the same reasons as were set out in the Legal Advisor's recommendations on the Council Tax Reduction Scotland Regulations 2012, SSI 2012-303, and the Council Tax Reduction State Pension Credit Scotland Regulations 2012, SSI 2012-319. It appears to our legal advisers that the regulations further the implementation of the schemes established by the Council Tax Reduction Scotland Regulations 2012 and the Council Tax Reduction State Pension Credit Scotland Regulations 2012. In particular, this is done in two ways. Firstly, there is an uprating of an amount of child allowance which is used in those principal regulations in the calculation of council tax reduction which a claimant is entitled to receive. Secondly, further provision for reduction is made in respect of households living in higher band houses but with a weekly net income below a specified level where the council tax rate for a property is within the tax bands E to H. Those amendments are consistent with the original purpose of the principal regulations. It is recognised that the Scottish Government takes a contrary view. Do members have any comments? And if there are no... Oh, Stuart, thank you. No, no thank you. Uh, certainly, it's, uh, in terms of the, well, the Scottish Government's position, uh, I would assume that the, the Scottish Government so they, they will have had legal advice uh, to allow them to actually come to uh, the contrary view that, uh, that uh, the committee advisers uh, actually have. Yes, um, I dare say, um, notwithstanding um, um, 
uh, we have our legal advisers too, and it is not unknown for a Scottish Government uh, legal advice to differ from the legal advice given to this committee, and this is one um, such example. I have to say that um, it has very often been the case, I think it's recorded in our statistics, that um, in well, uh, something like 75% of the time, the Scottish Government has actually accepted the advice of um, the legal advisers to this committee, but in this case, they have chosen not to. Uh, I and also, convener, just in terms of obviously uh, what you had to say, uh, that you know, so this isn't the first time uh, that this situation uh, has arisen uh, on, uh, on this particular uh, set of regulations, either. No, no, there has been um, there has been um, a, a division in the committee. Um, since these um, regulations were first introduced in either 2012 or 2013, I can't remember which. Mm. But um, you, you're absolutely right in what you say. Okay. Anyone else get anything they want to say at this point? So, um, the question is then, uh, does the committee wish to draw the regulations to the attention of Parliament on reporting grounds F on the basis that they raise a devolution issue? No. Um, right. Well, in that case, um, I will put a, a motion um, to the committee, and, and thereafter I would invite you to vote on that motion, um, as we are not agreed. So the proposition, so the motion is, the proposition is that the committee considers that the regulations raise a devolution issue and should be drawn to the regulations of the Parliament on that basis. Are we agreed? So those in favour of that proposition, please raise their hands. Those against? Thank you very much. So on that basis, um, the proposition is agreed to, and we will therefore um, draw the regulations to the attention of the Parliament on reporting grounds F. Thank you very much. Moving on to the next instruments on our agenda, no points have been raised by our legal advisers on Upper Tribunal for Scotland Rules of Procedure Regulations 2016, SSI 2016-232, the Road Traffic Permitted Parking Area and Special Parking Area Highland Council Designation Order 2016, SSI 2016-245, Parking attendants wearing of uniforms, Highland Council Parking Area Regulations 2016 SSI 2016-246. The Road Traffic Parking Adjudicators, Highland Council Regulations 2016 SSI 2016-247. And the Scottish Fire and Rescue Service Framework Order 2016. SSI 2016-249. Further, the Water Instrument Shellfish Water Protected Areas Designation Scotland Order 2016, SSI 2016-251. Is the committee content with these instruments? Okay. Thanks very much. Agenda item three is the consideration of instruments not subject to any parliamentary procedure and no points have been raised by our legal advisers on the following instruments which is the Act of Sedern Registration Appeal Court 2016 SSI 2016 241 or on the Act of Sedern Rules of the Court of Session 1994 and Sheriff Court Rules Amendment No. 3 Miscellaneous 2016 SSI 2016-242, or on the Act of Sedarent Fitness Assessment Tribunal Rules 2016, SSI 2016-244, or the Land Reform Scotland Act 2016, Commencement Number 2 and Transitory Provisions Regulations 2016, SSSI, SSI 2016-250C21, close brackets. Is the committee content with these instruments? 
content. Thank you very much. I'm glad that you are content. And that concludes the committee's business for today. And I now close this meeting. Thank you all for your attendance. <laughs>